Okay, so we're going to cover today on my 5 Minute Fridays what it is to print a session in your Pro Tools session. And what do I mean by printing? Well, you see that where it says print and you see this track here. This print recorded the whole entire session. All of these tracks, right? All of these funny colored looking things printed or recorded onto this track here. And why did I do that? One, I don't bounce any longer from Pro Tools. I don't know if the newer version of Pro Tools, if the bounce is better than its predecessors, but bouncing out of Pro Tools usually drops in volume. Not a whole lot, but a noticeable difference depending on what you've created. And that noticeable difference is actually annoying. You work so hard and you're gonna do all this stuff to it and then you bounce it out and then you may not notice it all the time, but the day that you notice, why is, did it sound slightly different? It's gonna puzzle you as to what am I doing wrong? You're probably thinking, well, maybe I didn't crank it up loud enough or I didn't do this loud enough, whatever. And then you bounce it out, and then, you know, again, some more of that shave is, is gone. It may be less than the prior time of you going in and out, fidd you know, fiddling around with it. But you realize that there is something noticeably different. And that noticeable difference can make a difference later on. You brought it to a maximum amount to actually, that's the one you want the public to hear. or That's the one you want some work done on the mastering and, 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 some things got taken away. So bouncing isn't always going to give you the volume that you want in Pro Tools if you are an operator from like 8 and eight LE or 8 or whatever and 10. I'm still on 10, 10 HD. I like it and I'm not going to change at this point. Uh, I eventually will, but not right now. Um, so 10 gives me the same issues with the bounce. It, it will bounce out and it would sound not as good as the session itself. So printing is what I will do. I've been using printing since I discovered it. Now it was back in the eight days and um, I've stuck with it. So I think it's still a better way to go as opposed to uh, uh, bouncing. Sometimes also the other problem is if you're bouncing, you, your computer system, depending on how it could handle it, may drop the bounce in, in mid bounce. So you lose out again. We gotta wait again. So a mid bounce, you don't want that drop to take place. And why is it doing that? Well, I don't know. Again, it could be a computer system. It could just be a glitch in the system. And that again is annoying. Printing seems to save that problem. So how do I do it? Boom, click over. And as you see here, I have a track called Submix and everything is routed to this submix. These are some effect outs, and these effect outs are connected to these effects, because these effects are connected to the effects outs, and then a bus out, sorry, a bass out, which is good for the bass. The bass has a bus and a bus out. The drums have a bus out, the keys have a, sorry, a bus out, I'm right, uh, a bus out. And uh, these other effects, they came from Reasons, they also have an effect out. So that everything is routed to its um, assigned instrument or effect, and those effects are affected to the submix. So since this is a very short tutorial, I'm not going to hold everybody up with it, but everything is basically routed to one another. And I should also make this submix. Boom. So everything is routed to one another. The only thing that is slightly different is this audio track takes the submix as an input. So that's the only thing that the submix, the bus track, is going to share its input with, which is this audio track. So let's say I didn't have these two and I'll make a new 
stereo and a new stereo aux. Boom. And there you have it, those two. You would name your available track as your submix if you want, as you know, I already have it done. Why is that mono? Let's get rid of this one. This was a mistake. I wanted it to be stereo. Boom. Now, you would route, as I said before, you would route your input to whatever available one you have. I already have one named. So let's say I went to 120, right? And then I would take that same 120 and input it to the stereo uh, audio track. And then let's say I rename them sub mix two. And then bam, audio one and aux two are now linked together and this will just be nothing called more than print two and sub mix two. Oops. Sub mix two. There we go. So now the job, the real work would be routing all of these into submix two. So get it? You would just look for the bus submix two and relate it to the new sub that you created. Since I already created it, I don't have to do it again. So we're going to get rid of this. We're going to put these back to submix and submix. Boom. And so we're now all connected. Everything is connected. We have our submix. We have our print ready to go. We would arm the record on there. It's already muted. You don't want to have it playing while it's recording. That will just make it sound weird and it so doesn't sound good. And we would go there, boom, and we would just hit play. Wait, no, we don't hit play. I want to hit the record first. And then and watch the magic happen. And you see it's recording. And as you can see, it records. I mean, I could go on for hours and then just keep playing it. No, 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 no. The other good thing is while it's recording, you could also make changes as it's doing it. As if it were a bounce, you couldn't do anything. You weren't able to do it. In this case, you can here. So let's say I want to make a change in this here somewhere. I could do that. I could bring that down. I could do that all in real time. Or just, you know, do something stupid like, like that. Or whatever. I have that ability and it didn't affect me having to stop to do it before I did it. So that's great. That's, a, that's another brilliant thing about the print. It allows me to do everything in it, within it. So consider the print as it's called more or less you printing it onto tape. It's not really tape, but it's just acting as if you are, and that's what this will be. I hope it's helpful. Hope you guys like my 5-Minute Fridays tip, and try it. Tell me what you think if you haven't used it before, and if you do use it, why do you use it? Do you use it for the same reasons, uh, or do you use it for different reasons? Let me know.